Hey, this is Scott with Hawaii Jet Boat and Drone Adventures. This is episode 46. We are here to pump you up. In the last couple of uh, weeks or so, I've received a number of emails and calls about people with pump issues. And that jet that you see over my shoulder, that jet of water coming out, is all delivered to us by a Yamaha jet pump system. The jet pump system is the simplest thing next to an oar for propulsion on a boat. So let's jump right in on it. So here's my boat. I'm pointing at what would be considered the impeller housing. Behind that, heading out towards the water area, is going to be your pump. This is the area that the water gets spun through and is channeled into the next piece of equipment, which is your reduction nozzle. The reduction nozzle takes the full diameter of the water coming through it and reduces it in size, pressurizes it even more, and sends it out the steering nozzle. And there, of course, that plastic thing is the reverse gate, and that other thing at the bottom is your keel. Using Yamaha's Microfish, we're going to go through the engine components. This is the engine in an exploded view where you can't see the body of the engine, but this is it, your crankshaft. Follow along with the mount with my cursor, the mouse cursor. You'll go up through the stubby shaft and you'll go to number 12 which is the coupler. Yamaha's system is a direct drive. If the engine is turning, the, the crankshaft is turning, therefore the coupler is turning, the coupler is turning, the drive shaft to the impeller is turning and then you're getting water flow out the, exhaust, out the uh, jet nozzle and into the directional nozzle. All right, we're at another screen, another microfish, and this is the exploded view of the uh, mid shaft and the mid shaft bearing. And it also has the uh, coupler and the dampener in this image. Follow the mouse. This is the what we would call the uh, mid shaft bearing. There is the mid shaft shaft itself. That is the coupler and the next thing is the dampener. All of these made up with the engine coupler and they're, they're lined up in a straight line. The drive shaft, which you see in the lower image, is a spline fit very similar to an automatic transmission in, an, in a car. It's the same thing, it's a slip fit. This next exploded view is of the water intake area. There's three components. You've got number 17, which I call the intake grate. You have that ramp looking thing, That's uh, I call that the shoe. I think in uh, personal watercraft they call that the pump shoe. And the last thing is the intake, I'm sorry, the uh, ride plate. The ride plate is what, if you've watched any of my videos, the ride plate is what I attached my GPS transducer fish finder to. So again, you have the intake grate, the shoe, and the ride plate. The, if you get something stuck, if you run over a stick or a bag or whatever it is, it comes up through that intake grate, gets wrapped around the drive shaft or gets clogged into the pump, this is this is where it comes in from, that intake rate right there. This next exploded view is of the actual pump. The whole thing is called the pump. Sometimes just the one part of it is called pump, but in general when you're speaking about this part of the boat on a Yamaha, it's called the pump. Let's go through all the individual pieces here. Starting with number one, that square piece in the lower, the lower bottom, that's called the transom plate. Then numbers three and four, they are the impeller housing. This is where the impeller sits. This is where it spins inside this to create the velocity of the water flow. Then you have the impeller. Number eight is the impeller duct. I call that the pump. When you're seeing people talk about the actual pump, I damaged my pump, that's what usually what they're talking about is they damage the steering vanes or they got something caught in there and blah, blah, blah. Uh, again, up here at the top, you have the cone. You have the nozzle. I call that the reduction nozzle because it is reducing the flow, the diameter of the water that's coming off of the pump and then compressing it down into the exit, which of course is, they call it the deflector, but I call it the steering nozzle. And, and then there's the reverse gate. From a maintenance standpoint, let's just talk about parts three and four, the impeller housing. These are cast pieces with pressed aluminum liners, which the impeller spins around in. Over time, salt water gets inside, in between the press fitting and the housing, 
and forces the liner to, de to deform and actually come in contact with the prop, the spinning prop. Eventually you start to hear this jangly, jangly, jangly sound when you have it out of the water. You're starting to flat spot your impeller housing. Over time, flat spotting the impeller housing will damage your impeller, but probably the, the more, most of the brunt is taken by the impeller housing. That is the weaker of the two. So they are a replaceable maintenance item once in a while. You'll just start to notice that making a lot of jingly jangly noises and you can maybe even start to hear it scraping. It's time to replace it. It's not that hard to do. And it is a regular maintenance thing for everybody who's been in salt water. All right, now let's take a look at everything back in real life. Here's a tighter view. You can see the transom plate. You can still start to see the first two um, impeller housings where my fingers are at. Then back here, that, that right there, that is your actual impeller with the veins. This is your reduction nozzle. And then of course the steering nozzle. Steering cable. That plate below my hand is your ride plate. And this is your reverse gate. Uh, lever or I'm sure I'm sorry cable going back under the boat the parts are there above us is the ride plate and there that opening you can just see two of the grates they've lost the paint but that is the intake grate right above that about a two or three inches is the spinning drive shaft now let's look at a real-life example of a pump without its steering nozzle and reduction nozzle on it this is my wave runner you can see up in there you can see the impeller you can see the blades of the pump and you can see the cone Notice this blade, notice how straight it is. Notice this blade is not straight, it has a dimple into it. You can already see some scratches on it as well. This blade has obviously come in contact with something, usually it's a rock, or out here in Hawaii it would be rock or coral. This kind of damage to your impeller will cause cavitation problems and eventually a loss of top speed and out of the whole performance. Okay, let's go over some of the parts right here. This is the trailing edge of the impeller blade. That is the composite wear ring, and that is the gap between the blade and the wear ring. There's a gap right there as well. You can see the differences between the two. Here's another one right here, the blade and the composite uh, wear ring. And this is just the damaged impeller blade. Now let's look at some real pump parts out of a 94 Superjet square nose. Everything here came off a of Yamaha except that impeller. That impeller is a Kawasaki. That's the reason why it's not on the drive shaft. I'm just using it as an example. From, right to, from left to right, you have the coupler, you have the mid shaft, you have the mid shaft bearing, you have the drive shaft, you have the intake grate, you have the propeller, impeller, you have the pump, reduction nozzle, and steering nozzle. This is what they look like when they're taken out. This is what all the parts look like individually. Your coupler, mid shaft, bearing holder, bearing mount. Close up of the bearing mount. This is a Zerk fitting. It has grease that gets pumped into it. It's serviceable. Intake grate. This is a Jet Dynamics Performance intake grate. This is the face or the leading edge of the pump. If the propeller impeller was there, it would be screwed down and you see it on, on this. This is the uh, rear of the pump with the cone, which compresses, that helps compress the water and, and tighten it up. And it sends it into the reduction nozzle, which has steering vanes on it, which straighten the water out. And they send it through to the steering nozzle. All right. Hopefully now, after nine minutes of watching me, you know more about the Yamaha jet boat drive system than you did before you started watching this video. The Yamaha system is very easy to understand. It's very easy to work on. Anybody with home tools and a little bit of uh, mechanical prowess will be able to work on this boat. Once you get the drive shaft off and everything, you do have to have a special tool to remove the propeller or the impeller off of the off of the drive shaft and one of the most complicated things is putting it back in and lining up the spline the uh, drive shaft to this to the mid shaft because it's splined that can be a little bit of a challenge anyway you'll be able to get it it's not that hard anyway this is scott with hawaii jet boat and drone adventures we'll see you next time aloha